9 o'clock on the dot. Guess who's back? Back again. No drop top? Next up's back. Tell your friends. Yep. Week number two. They let us back in the building. So we are back here. Paul Ihander, along with Instagram Hill on the ones and the twos after a very, very lively weekend in sports. So let's just jump right into it. So about the last two days, there's a sound that you're probably hearing. It is uh, maybe it's a, a slow creaking up as the NC State men's basketball team was kind of lying on its back, and all of a sudden the lightning struck the tower and the electricity jolted right back into the body of Wolfpack basketball, and all of a sudden they're back on life support. After two losses, they whoo, they made it a unique, unique experience in Clemson. With DJ Horn playing the role of spoiler, who has stepped up his game in a monster way, 78-77. Late defensive stand in that one. Uh, Back and forth, especially at halftime, where it looked like State was going to kind of walk away from Clemson. Then the Tigers got hot from the outside. Even the uh, broadcast on ACC Network picked the Clemson players player of the game. That probably could have been rescinded. (laughs) Moments Uh, before disaster. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, Horn said, you know what? I'm going to play the spoiler, and he's embracing the role of bad guy Insta for sure. Like, he he hit that runner with nine seconds to go in that one. And State, as I mentioned, back on live support. I mean, it's been a rough go. Last last eight games, like three and five, and slipping out of what has been determined to be an ACC kind of three-bid fourth team kind of looking on the inside-outside bubblingness with Pitt playing as well as they've been playing. State really needed to get this dub to avoid falling into the kind of middle, of the, the true middle of the ACC. But they, they come out on the end of that one. And, you know, all credit uh, to these guys for, for making that happen. Kevin Keats spoke after the game, talked about executing uh, late in this one. Uh, what a game. And, uh, you know, these games in the ACC have been all, especially for us, really competitive. If you look back at our last couple of games, they've been possession games. And I thought that, you know, we had lost focus down the stretch in a couple of them and didn't execute. Um, we did that tonight. We did a great job, um, you know, was able to draw DJ a play up. And, you know, players make plays. He made a big play. I thought Ben did a great job with his Superman wall up at the end where we didn't get a foul. Uh, but, you know, just grit. It was a grit win for our group. You know, uh, this is a tight race when you look at it as a bunch of teams around seven, eight wins. And, you know, anytime you can get a road win, it's um, golden. And we beat a good Clemson team on their home floor. And, um, you know, it was, a, it, was a, it was a great game. And um, we get a chance to um, get back and, and go home for a little bit. Yeah, go home. Get back. And they come home with six to go. This team, this state basketball team, sitting right now at 16-9 to nine with six left. And what I like to call the zone defense shows up tomorrow night at PNC when Syracuse comes in. Syracuse fighting as well. State's best best chances right now to get these next three, Insta. Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, one thing that I want to make note of is we had DJ Horn on the Pat Therapy podcast, Tim Donnelly and myself. That episode is, is available now wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And the one thing that stuck out to me was when DJ said that with all the new additions that there were still stuff that they were working on. And remember I even asked you Friday, you know, with seven games before that Clemson game, what else is there to work on? I think Kevin Keats kind of alluded to it in his post-game press conference as far as executing in close games. They were able to do that. They, For a majority of the game, NC State was leading against Clemson. As you mentioned, Clemson finally started to get hot there towards the end. But NC State was able to hold their own in a tough road environment, and they were able to execute. And DJ Horn, who opened the scoring for the Wolfpack in that game, was able to close the scoring out in that game. By the way, Tim and I are just taking credit since he was our – most recent guest on Pat there before take all the, take all that for the credit. game winning shot. Take Wolfpack all that fans. credit. Yeah, Joe Girard for Clemson was on fire from like range. He couldn't miss. And PJ Hall continued doing PJ Hall things. But you know, this time it goes the other way. And these are the wins that you have to have. And state schedule with six to go doesn't get any simpler. The next three they've got to win, but it's the final three that will prove whether or not they are a tournament worthy team as opposed to a tournament ready team because they have to face Duke and Carolina and Pitt. And those are those are not simple those are not simple uh wins by any means in a in a very competitive conference. And the and the balance in this conference too is the same kind of way with Q's coming up tomorrow night at PNC, which will 
dig into a little bit tomorrow. So State pulled one out. Lots of good guard play. Again, like the bad guy. I mean, we could just we could call him the bad guy. Uh, honestly, DJ Horn, like he's he's embraced it. Like he's hit he's hitting the clutch stuff. He wants the ball, and that's when winners want the ball, and that's late. And State now finds themselves right knotted with Pitt, who won five in a row. Pitt got a win over the weekend too. As did Carolina in a very workman, I guess you could call it a workmanlike game against against Virginia Tech. A 15 point win. Never really felt like it was in doubt. Armando Baycott said, uh, going basically back to cool in the game, getting their groove back. Definitely. Uh, obviously, we had a tough little stretch. And going into this game, we knew we had to bring out a game, especially with just how they run their sets. And I mean, it's a tough team with the way they shoot the ball, they experienced it. I thought today we did some great things defensively. We had a little bit of lapses, but it was a great win going into this week off, and we get a chance to get back in the lab and kind of address some of the things we need to work on. Yeah, Heels have five in a row to go, and he's mentioned get back in the lab. They go up to Virginia, who got got a uh, got a squeaker dub over a very tough Wake Forest team over the weekend. They have Miami State, Notre Dame, and Duke, so their roads. Uh, not as uh, their roads just as hard as states is, although it feels like, and I mean, we just we just call it right now. Carolina is a tournament team; they're being you know viewed as a two or a three seed right now, depending on what brackets you listen to. But it really never felt like it was in doubt. Yeah, it seemed like once North Carolina went up by double digits at halftime, that the game was kind of uh, a wrap. And especially in the second half, when Carolina guards quickly realized that Virginia Tech's players were dealing with foul trouble, they just had no answer down low for Baycott. And he just consistently pounded the ball inside. And, you know, that also meant that any three-point attempt that was made by – that was attempted by Cormac Ryan, who had a good game, he was open, he was easy, it was easy for him to convert. I mean, in two games, Ryan has gone 8 of six, eight of 16 from three and 6 of 6 from the free throw line. If this is the version of Cormac Ryan the Tory Hills will get for the rest of the season, I'm sure Carolina fans will take it. They'll take that balance. There's no doubt about it. If you remember back to Friday's show and you can revisit that on our YouTube channel or, or if you just subscribe and like our podcast next up here on 99.9 The Fan, you can go back and hear me call out how Armando Baycott needed a ton of touches early on. He went for 25 and 12. Yeah, this is Armando Baycott's time, and he did that in thirty minutes. That is, that is ridiculous production, and he managed to stay out of foul trouble too, which is a good thing. You stay on the floor, and that's the kind of workmanlike effort that you get. It was in this amazing effort, but they got what they needed to do, which was a dub, and move up in the standings and stay at the top and get that twentieth win, much like Virginia did over Wake Forest, and also what Duke did at the same time when Duke got their roadie against Florida State. Again, another one of those games that never felt like it was any doubt whatsoever, but an amazing performance by the guy who's really starting to stir the drink, and it's Jared McCain. John Shire praised him up. There was a special performance. You know, I've been lucky to be a part of um, my 15 years, but especially as a coach for 11, to see a lot of special performances by any player, but especially freshmen, and that was up there with any of them. Like, it really was. And uh, he... Uh, you know, J.J. should watch out. I think he broke J.J.'s record for threes in, in a game, right? For a freshman. For a freshman. For a freshman. Uh, but to me, it was just his, his grit, his will, his determination to win was special. Ten-point lead at half. Uh, it, contrary to the Baycott feed in the post, they tried with Flip a little bit, but he couldn't get going. He had a rough night. So it was McCain that picked it up. I mean, he was from range. He couldn't miss. I mean, it was it was silly. Once he released the ball, like every time you're like, oh, yeah, that one's going in. Yeah, hit oh, seven. Yeah, that one's going in. Hit, hit seven three pointers in the first half and shot 60% overall, 12 for 20 to be exact, including eight for 11 from long distance in his seventh game, scoring 20 or more points. Yeah, you know, and it didn't, you know, it. Clearly didn't help. Tyrese Proctor didn't make the trip. He was dealing with concussion protocols, obviously. So Duke really tightened up. Shired really tightened up rotation there. I mean, everybody, with the exception of Flip, who had who had some foul trouble in that one, uh, played at least 34 minutes. There wasn't a lot of other contribution, to be honest. It was spots. It was spots. You know, prior to the uh, the the uh, official timeouts. You know, at the at the at the multiples of four. But they got what they needed to do, grind one out. And for Duke, again, it's that same kind of bit. Just keep grinding it out, stay towards the top, fight your way into the tournament, see what clicks, see what doesn't. Again, their ride is not as simple. Their ride looks like State's ride going into the end here. Two more on the road, staying in Florida for Miami, and then going to Wake, and then you have Louisville and Virginia, still State and Carolina. So I think Duke may have the toughest uh, schedule remaining 
of the three main triangle teams that we have here. They're hmm. going to have to fi- they're going to have to figure that out. They talk about consistency and whatnot. It's there. They have the star players. They have the star power. It's whether or not they can finish this season on a right note, and they've got three weeks to figure it out. They're also starting to prov- they're also starting to have star power from guys that are providing a spark off the bench. I mean, Coach Shire also praised junior guard Jalen Blake, some freshman forward Sean Stewart for providing quality minutes. He said there, it's not really going to show up in the stat sheet in that win against Florida State, but the baskets that they made at times came at. Key moments, as you mentioned, maybe to send Florida State to a media timeout uh, trailing a little bit. So to learn something here, everybody, this morning, the standings right now, top three, Carolina, Duke, and Virginia, all with 20 wins on the season, all feel like they are tournament bound. And then you have three teams in that fourth slot jockeying for what could be a bubble bubble play whatsoever based on kind of how things are going. Pitt is the hottest team right now with State leaning in and then Wake if Wake could just win on the road, Insta, they would be just. There would be something to say about Wake, but they're winning it. They win at home, but that's not what's going to catch the eye of everybody. You got to get those dubs on the road, and they just can't find them. Yeah, and unfortunately, you would think with the amount of talent that uh, Steve Forbes was able to bring in from the transfer portal prior to the season, they would have more success on the road. But I mean, I guess you know, home is where the heart is. So I mean, they just want to be. They just want to be home warriors, I guess. That's where the wins are too, <laughs> for uh, for Wake and uh, for other teams. So ACC big weekend. Uh, Virginia actually taking on Virginia Tech tonight in the ACC. That could shake things up depending on how that one goes. That would give Virginia a little bit of a nudge in the standings as well. I'm Graham Hill with three things you need to know right now from 999 The Fan. It was a good weekend of college basketball for our Triangle schools. As Duke, UNC, and NC State were all victorious on Saturday. Number nine, Duke defeated Florida State 76-67. Number seven, UNC handled Virginia Tech 96-71. And NC State, thanks to a last-second shot by DJ Horn, defeated Clemson 78-77. Also, all three Triangle schools had successful opening weekend series in college baseball. Number 12, Duke defeated Indiana George Mason and number 18, Coastal Carolina over the weekend. Number 15, UNC swept Wagner and number 13, NC State. Despite losing the second game of the series to VCU, won the overall series with a 5-3 victory. Yesterday, number 11, ECU also swept Ryder as well. Finally, it was also a great weekend for the Carolina Hurricanes as they defeated the Arizona Coyotes 5-1 on Friday and the Vegas Golden Knights 3-1 on Saturday. Find these stories and more on WRLSportsFan.com. I don't think they make greeting cards for daylight today, but it is President's Day. For those of you wondering why the uh, drive into work or wherever you were headed today wasn't as rough as it normally is on a Monday morning. Those of you who take part in the day off and are making us part of your day, thank you very much. Paul Leihander here, Instagram Hill on the ones and the twos. Before we move on to talk about your Carolina Hurricanes, I do want to mention the NC State women, and I did not want to exclude them. In the college basketball conversation, we just happened to hit uh, up against the hard times and, and the clocks, which, you know, as you know, can make the boss mad. But uh, her ears are going to start ringing right now. Uh, Isaiah James. Yep. NC State played 42 minutes in their overtime win, 86-85, over Georgia Tech at home, in which Georgia Tech should have won this game, but had no closing spirit. Had a couple of lucky bounces to take it to OT, a couple of clutch shots. And at the end of this thing... Uh, which which resulted, honestly, in a rough night for Sanaya Rivers, who I love, long player, has speed for days. Uh, she was able to kind of sneak past everybody who was trying to box out River Baldwin, who is a, just a mean, mean, mean mug in the post. Uh, Sanaya Rivers snuck on a backdoor rebound and put one off the glass, and then Georgia Tech opted at the end of this one not to call a timeout in the last uh, 9, 10 seconds. They had a couple of uh, looks at the rim, and just short armed it late, like, and that's you know that comes with experience, right? That's that's where the more of those moments that you get as a basketball team, the more you come through in the clutch. And in front of a sellout crowd, where State really didn't play very well at all, they kept pace with a very very scrappy Georgia Tech team. Uh, Wes Moore at the end of that thing looked like he was gonna <laughs> pass out, <laughs> like almost white in the face, like, he- and he was shaking his head at that last opportunity, like either either the fact that he knows they escaped with that win at Reynolds 
or he knows that, boy, we are taking so many shots, somebody's going to get us eventually. Like, everybody yeah. is gunning for him right now. Poor Westmore. I mean, he has enough of a quality, t- a quality talented team where they should run a, a team like Georgia Tech, even though they're scrappy, uh, out of the building. But, I mean, yeah, Westmore, I'm sure, going through it, he goes through it a lot as a Dallas Cowboys fan. We know this from his conversations on the Adam Gold Show. I'm sure he'd love for his his team eventually or to get back to just running teams off the court at Reynolds Coliseum. ACC is a strong, strong conference on the women's side for sure. Again, State escaping that one. River Baldwin, by the way, is unstoppable in the post. If they just make it a point to feed her the basketball, she can get everything going. But Isaiah James, man, she, whew, again, I hope your ears are ringing right now because we're saying your name with pride. Cry I mean, me that, a River Baldwin. That is, uh, she's she's going. Uh, Duke women play tonight against Notre Dame. That game over on Buzz Sports Radio tonight. Uh, at 7 o'clock, uh, 620 AM, 104.5 FM, 99.9 HD2. Carolina Hurricanes back in action tonight. It is a hockey night in Carolina, back at home after a road trip into the desert, where if you heard the uh, three things you needed to know, one of the things you needed to know from Graham was the fact that the Canes pulled out four points, which our friend Adam Gold would call a successful road trip for the Carolina Hurricanes as they come back home. We got the shorty from Seth Jarvis on late Saturday night. I guess it was – that might have been Sunday morning uh, when he got that shorthand. It was goal. in the second period. Yeah, so, so it had been close to, to Sunday morning. They if might have not, been teetering with midnight. It was a Saturday night live for Seth Jarvis who who scored uh, the night before in Arizona and then got the shorthanded goal, which ended up being the game winner for the Carolina Hurricanes. Rod Brindamore talked about the third period – of action to win in that one. Well, we capitalized. You know, Jarvie, heck of an individual effort. Um, and then, you know, they were they, you know, pushing a little bit, and we were able to capitalize on an odd man rush. Nice play by Nazer to, you know, knock it down and tap it in. So then you get ahead by a couple. It's you know, you're in good shape. But I mean, Spencer Martin was the difference. I mean, kept us in in the first period where we were not very good, and I thought they were really good playing their game and. You know, he gave us a chance. You find those gems, right? Waiver wire gems. You don't always strike on them. Uh, Jesse Pulyarvi comes to mind. That was a trade, though. <laughs> but uh, Spencer Martin on a back-to-back got the call after Kachetkov did his business against the Arizona Coyotes, who have now lost nine in a row. They lost again yesterday. Uh, but the Knights had more shots. I mean, even throughout that game, late Saturday, early Sunday morning, so, I mean, we're still really only talking 24 hours removed, uh, they 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 went uh, mano a mano between the two teams. And, yeah, Jarvis is shorty at the beginning of that third period and then getting the extra from Nason late in that one helped. And this is, you know, where we talk about not getting complimentary goals but getting strong goals from guys. Andre Svechnikov comes out and – puts points on the board and gets that goal to get them level against the Golden Knights. In the same night before where your your free agent signing, Michael Bunting got a goal late in in the game against Carolina to get him moving, and Marty Natchez had a couple of helpers. And so you get the goals from the Stars, which pushes you forward, and then you get the goalie play from a guy like Martin, which makes things special. Rod talked about what he's noticed about him as well. Well, he's certainly calm, and I mean, he's listen. He's done the job. It's plain and simple. He was the the reason we won tonight. So, um, you know, good on him, and it's been great to help us out, and um, been a great addition. There's something to be said about having confidence in your goalies, which, if you look at Rod Brindamore and this team, you know, they pride themselves on on continuity when it comes to defense, and just kind of structured environment and how things go. And that defense is designed to protect goalies from taking shots. But sometimes against a team like the Golden Knights, you need Martin to step up, and he did. And that's a confidence builder for him, but also for Rod, knowing that he can tap him on the shoulder now a little bit more often, knowing he's got a couple of big wins under his belt for this team. You also need your guys out in front, especially the defenseman pairing, to step in. I thought Caroline did a really good job of taking the Golden Knights their style of play out of the game, which is that transition offense. You know, we usually talk about transi- transition offense in basketball, but the Golden Knights have a great way of, I mean, just look at the first goal that they scored. It was a simple turnover in Carolina's zone, and Vegas was just able to push guys out in front, and they were able to score just like that. But I think another big part of why the Hurricanes won, you mentioned to it, was the confidence they got after the goal that Sveshnikov scored to even it back up just a minute and 21 seconds left. And then it just seemed like, Carolina just took Vegas out of the game completely as far as 
breaking away and getting one-on-one chances to the goalie. Like what happens with in Vegas, having witnessed it firsthand many times, it's tough to play from behind against Vegas, especially in their own barn, because the Golden Knights, they just kind of, to borrow a soccer phrase, they just kind of park the bus. Yeah. Like they just, they're just going to knock you around and knock you around, but they have lines and lines that lines that just keep coming. Just They just come at you relentlessly and Marchessault's that first goal Jonathan Marchessault for the Golden Knights you know put them up you're like oh crap you know it's 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 the usual suspects they're all going to get rolling here uh but it was it was it was good on the Canes to to fight back make things happen yeah and a little bit of magic too you get a shorty from Jarvis just seconds into that third period that that's that's special that's lightning in a bottle and going, you have to and they capitalized on that one going through two defenders as well to score that <laughs> yes, goal. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Uh, quickly on tonight, the Chicago Blackhawks are in town. You'll hear more preview from Adam Gold here coming up at noon and uh, throughout the afternoon getting you set up with the drive with Tim Donnelly. Uh, the reason to go to the Chicago game tonight is twofold. One, Connor Bedard. Connor Bedard is back in the lineup. He played in a Chicago win over the weekend on Saturday against Ottawa. He did not score a goal, but he had a goal taken away from him due to a coach's challenge. But he's special, and that goal was special. Triple deke. Had the had the Ottawa goalie on his heels the entire time. Of course, it got wiped away, but that's what you're going to see tonight. You're going to go see Connor Bedard. And for those of you who are Chicago Blackhawk fans, uh, that's why you're going to the game, too, because you're fans of Chicago. This should not be – we joke about being a grind-out a grind out win because it's the worst team in, in the Eastern Conference, but this should be a Carolina Hurricanes victory. A let, this would be a letdown if it's anything but a win. So you're telling me the Carolina Hurricanes got two big wins on the road on Friday and Saturday, Saturday being against the defending Stanley Cup champs, they come home to face the worst team in the Eastern Conference? Yes. Oh. Yeah, let's just trick them into believing it's an outdoor game. We do good in those. Yeah, that's true. Happy anniversary, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) Yeah, happy anniversary of the outdoor game.